Hey there, welcome back to the vlog. Almost everyone has heard of Microsoft Excel. As spreadsheets go, it's ubiquitous as part of Microsoft Office. It can do a lot of different things, and it's already got a very comprehensive set of functions that you can use out of the box, uh, you know, to solve complicated equations and do complex math. It also comes with a programming environment called Visual Basic for Applications. This is also known as VBA, which is derived from the Visual Basic 6 era of the late 1990s. Now, using this, you can code up specific additional functionality. Further, if that isn't enough, the VBA programming environment can pull in functionality from external dynamic libraries. Most Windows users will have pondered at some point why 90% of their computer appears to be filled with files ending in .dll. And what these files are is a topic for another day, but the 30,000th view is that these are libraries of pre-written code that can be imported into your application when you need it, saving each program from having to reinvent the wheel. This is why the X button on Notepad looks the same as in other programs because they all called the same create window function found in user32 DLL. And most file open dialogues look the same when they all borrow the same code from common dialog32 DLL. But what of Mac OS? In Mac OS, the equivalent of a DLL is a DYLib, short for dynamic library, meaning it can be pulled in just like a DLL and used when anyone wants. And yes, Excel for Mac can use these too. Now, this is a task that is rather rare. Trying to find people who need to load a DYLib on Excel for Mac is not going to show up many people. And there's a lot of mystery about getting this right. If you Google for this, you'll run into POSIX path issues which don't apply, uh, setting environment variables that are not necessary, and putting DYLibs in deep down folders in the system which won't actually help you with security. There's scant information from Microsoft on this, which is easily found, which also adds to the air of mystery. Despite these hurdles, there are a number of people trying to do this. I needed to do this for an upcoming vlog experiment where I attempt to take Microsoft Excel somewhere where I don't think I've ever seen anyone else take it. And this required the ability to access assembly routines in Excel on the Mac. The lack of clarity and misinformation surrounding this topic meant that I had to reach out to Microsoft and Microsoft's own engineers got in touch with me directly in order to just clarify the order of operations here. The first thing that you're going to obviously need is a DYLib. I'm not going to go into the depth of that today, as you know, this is a topic for another day. But for now, just anyone that needs to know, uh, I simply created an STL library project in Xcode using C++, and the source code for that is down in the Bitbucket link in the description below. Uh, and I also put in the Excel spreadsheet that calls it. I added two functions to the library. The first one adds two integers together and just returns the result. The other function returns the answer to life, the universe, and everything. This is a very important function. <laughs> I wrapped the declarations for these both in an external C attribute in the header, and uh, you know, this stops the compiler from name mangling things. Second, I copied the dylib to this folder. This is necessary due to the security sandboxing used on the Mac. Uh, put it in here so Excel can use it. Third, I declared these dylib functions in VBA so that VBA knows how to call them properly. Note the use of the safe pointer keyword, which indicates to 64-bit VBA that you've checked things properly and this declaration is proper and it's going to work. Fourth, I included a VBA function to get access to the dylib folder. Fifth, I built a public stub function that requests access to the folder and if I got access it then calls the appropriate dylib function. These would normally be far less lines of uh, production code, but I wrote things slightly different to clarify the order of operations by splitting them into distinct steps as opposed to sort of smoshing them all together. That's it. No environment variables, no special incantations, no special folders. It just works. As I said, Microsoft did get involved to help me with this, so many thanks to them for clearing the air surrounding this. Also, as mentioned earlier, this is a pretty rare thing to do. Most VBA programmers on Windows don't use DLLs, and on Mac this is going to be even fewer. The code is all checked in here. If you want to check it out, please do so. If you like these vlogs, give them a thumbs up. 
If you don't, thumbs down. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. And I'll speak to you soon.